Let's bring John McMullen uh, into the conversation. It got a little heated there, John. At the bottom of the hour, we uh, looked at that list, top 12 you know, NFL head coaches. Uh, the one that really, you know, Andy Reid, who just signed an extension, top five coach in the league, and uh, people were in an uproar like that. So uh, where do you put Andy? Is he a top five NFL head coach? Yeah, unquestionably. Who had an uproar about that? The current NFL head coach is undoubtedly top five. You're talking about a guy top ten all time uh, in wins in NFL history. Uh, the consistency of all the playoff appearances here in Philadelphia and Kansas City. <laughs> He's made the playoffs three out of four years in Kansas City. Uh, you would think Philadelphia fans would start to recognize things haven't been quite the same around here since he left. But I guess because he didn't get the Super Bowl, I guess everyone forgets how much success this team used to have. Yeah, so let's throw a couple. Uh, the number one was Bill Belichick, which no one has a problem with. The question always is, John, Belichick's one, who's two? It always seems that there's not really a definitive answer on who that number two guy is. No, I, I think there's a lot of people in the conversation. I've always said the biggest chasm in sports, though, is the, the difference between one and two when it comes to NFL head coaches because it's it's so uh, – it's, it's Grand Canyon-sized uh, from uh, the – number one to number two. But I, I agree with Pete Carroll. I think he's done enough uh, to be situated in that spot. Uh, but there's other guys in the conversation. I I, I, I would say Mike, Mike Tomlin of Pittsburgh would have a very good argument to be there. Uh, I'm not sure. I think, uh, I think that particular list overrated Mike McCarthy uh, a little bit. Uh, and part of that might be, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I have never seen a worse coach game in my life than Mike McCarthy in the NFC Championship game against the Seattle Seahawks. He, he handed that game to the Seahawks. So that one's kind of tough to get over, and, and I think Andy would be in the conversation, to be honest, to be number two. Yeah. Um, by Andy the way, is only 1-3 and three in the playoffs with the Chiefs so far as Chiefs head coach. 11-12 and 12 overall. Uh, 10 and 9 with the Eagles. So, yeah, I mean, this playoff success, I made it to the NFC Championship game four times. I mean, how many coaches out there? I, we get it. He didn't win the Super Bowl. So, with that, we had a little discussion. Harbaugh was six, and Peyton was nine. Uh, Peyton won a Super Bowl. Harbaugh won a Super Bowl. Does that automatically jump them over Andy? Well, I think in a lot of people's minds it does, but uh, for me, the you know you can win a Super Bowl and uh, not have the consistency uh, of of winning year after year. To me, the latter is more important. Uh, but it, it depends on one's personal definition. And if you know, I always talk about it. And happy NBA Draft Day, guys! And uh, you know, Mike, I've always said that. Uh, you know, there's this whole Sixers mentality, the Ricky Bobby mentality. If you're not first, you're last. Uh, and if you don't win the Super Bowl in the NFL, you have that stain on you. I, I, I look at it in a different way. To me, you know, there are so many uh, variables as far as injuries, as far as contracts, the salary cap, losing players. To me, the consistency of it is far more impressive when you're talking about coaching. But, again, it depends on one's personal definition. Okay, a couple things on Andy I want to get from you. Number one, he just signed an extension um, for him. I think uh, he was there, what, he was coming into his final year of his original five-year deal. He's 59 years old. He's 43 and 21. He's won 67% of his games in Chiefs. How many, you know, people thought he was maybe not burned out but just needed to kind of get out of coaching, but he went right back into it. He didn't take the year off. How long do you see Andy doing this? I mean, is he a guy that you see, you know, that you got to drag him off the field? Uh, or, or at some point does he say, all right, I'm done? Well, I think a lot of it depends on health. Uh, we've seen Bruce Arians, uh, for one, who also belongs in the, certainly in the top ten, uh, had some health problems last year, at least kind of thought about retirement. Gary Kubiak did retire. Uh, because of health issues, another Super Bowl winning coach. Uh, it's a very stressful job. 
And I, I, I think the underrated aspect of Andy leaving here, I think part of it was just shelf life. Uh, because when you're in one spot for so long, people start listening to the message, even if it's a good message. That's just human nature. Uh, so while I say that, uh, I believe that's true, but the, the underreported aspect was his family issues and the troubles he had with his his uh, two sons specifically. I think that's when the downfall started here in Philadelphia. Uh, and, and obviously in, in a new home, he's gotten right back to the consistent Andy Reid that was here for so long. John McMullen with us, and John, on the same day that they announced an extension for their head coach, they announced that the GM, John Dorsey, and the Chiefs are parting ways. Does this mean that Andy's going back to making personnel decisions in KC? Well, Andy always has been in charge. Uh, that's one of those things. We, we A couple months ago, uh, we had talked about the GM ratings that somebody put out, and there's all. And I mentioned there's all different levels of uh, of how people set up their front office structure. Sometimes the GM is a traditional GM, the way we think of it. Uh, sometimes it's it's, and that's what it is in Philadelphia now, uh, with Howie Roseman and Doug Peterson. But sometimes the coach is in charge, Bill Belichick, uh, Pete Carroll, one two on the list perfect example they have control over their teams and Andy Reid has control over his team so nothing uh will change as far as that goes yeah John Dorsey out uh, a, a statement basically you know they're parting ways here um but John like when when we talk about Andy and Philly that's kind of the dissension it was all right the coach or the executive like some people like didn't mind him as the coach but then the executive part of it kind of got in the way and other people said well i'd rather have him be the executive not the coach it was like pick a side uh so it's in terms of the personnel part what is his kind of uh uh if he's a top five head coach where do you put him as an executive i think he's proven to be very good i, I mentioned his issues with his family here in Philadelphia, what happened at that point, you remember Andy had to take a leave of absence. Uh, and that's sort of where uh, Joe Banner and Howie Roseman sort of seized a little bit of more control while he was out of the building, out of the organization. And that's when things started to turn poorly for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, I, I've, you know, he's a delegator. He understands uh, he can't do the legwork and he hires good people. Uh, he listens to him, but he makes the final decision. I think he's proven to be a tremendous success in both stops doing exactly that. John, do you, you're familiar with Brett Veach, who was a former Eagle scout. I'm seeing takes out there on Twitter that maybe he'd be a candidate to be the Chiefs GM. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be that type of situation. It's going to be somebody that Andy trusts and Andy gets along with and understands that what Andy wants. <laughs> and that's pretty much uh, the job description. So uh, anybody who goes in and wants to be, you know, that's a very impressive title. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're not a traditional GM. Uh, as we mentioned, you'll still have that general manager title. So that's a big step forward for anybody in their personnel career. And then there's the fact you're also probably going to have success, uh, which is only going to put your your name out there in a better light. So, True. Uh, yeah, it's going to it's going to be somebody uh, that he's very comfortable with, but he'll have complete control of that uh, football part of the organization, as he always does. Uh, by the way, I'll read the top ten. Stop me when you think there's a, an <laughs> egregious mistake. All right. Yeah. You ready? You ready, John? All right. Belichick. Pete Carroll, Mike McCarthy, Mike yeah, Tomlin. That's a bit high, but he's, okay. he's top ten. Okay. Mike Tomlin, Andy Reid, John Harbaugh, Bruce Arians, Ron Rivera, Sean Payton, number ten, Mike Zimmer. Uh, I, I would say Rivera is a little high. I think Zimmer's a little high as well. Uh, coming off of last season, uh, I think it was. If if you rewinded, he was he was really uh, on the rise. But I took I think he took a big step back. 
Uh, if you'll see, though, what are, almost all of those guys, what do they have in common? And, and it's experience. And there's something to those lists. I always say it's unfair. I mean, if you look at the bottom of the list, obviously it's all the first-year coach. And then Except four for Todd Bowles. Bowles. And then Doug, <laughs> Doug Peterson. And, you know, which shows you that Doug doesn't get a lot of respect around this league for whatever, what, for whatever reason. And, and I think if you look at it logically, and you look at the situation Doug was in, and we've talked about it n- numerous times, uh, about, you know, having a third-string quarterback all throughout the offseason, trading your perceived starter, and not your perceived, he was the starter eight days before the regular season. He goes with a rookie who barely practiced. Uh, they win seven games. They had the 10-game suspension uh, uh, with Lane Johnson. I, he did a pretty good <laughs> job. I, I for the life of me, I, I really can't understand it, guy. But Hugh Jackson ahead of him, John. Hugh Jackson, one I, win. I one of him. Him. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, Hugh has uh, a lot of respect around this league for his work as, a, as the coach in Oakland for one year when they were an absolute mess, uh, and he managed to get him to 500, and also his offensive coordinator. So, so that ties into it. So I, I get it. But, yeah, I mean, a guy won seven games with all those issues that I just brought up. And you're telling me he did a worse job than a guy who was 1-15? I, I, well, I just don't see how that computes. Yeah, not to mention we brought up the fact that in Andy's first year they won five games. In Vermeil's first year they won four games. And in Buddy Ryan's first year they won five games. You know, Buddy could do no wrong. Doug won seven games in his first year. Yeah, I, I'm amazed. I, I really, there's this I, weird. Ba- it's the same thing as you guys mentioned with Andy, and everybody was upset uh, about how how highly rated he is generally around the NFL. And I, I, I just don't understand the bitterness towards Andy Reid, and and I don't understand why people assume Doug Peterson's a bad coach. The fact that he got to seven wins with that roster. Uh, with a quarterback fresh out of North Dakota State, as I said, barely practiced because of the injury, was supposed to be the third-string guy. And then all of a sudden, hey, eight days before the regular season, oh, by the way, Doug, you got to start Carson Wentz. I, hey, I'm not, getting, I'm not getting all the criticism. Uh, in the NFC East, by the way, it was Garrett 13, uh, what was it for? Uh, uh, it was the Garrett, end, right. then McAdoo, and then Gruden. Uh, Garrett, 13. 13. McAdoo, right. McAdoo was, was 20, 20, and Gruden was 21. 21. That, and again, I always say Jay Gruden. You know, make sure. <laughs> with Who knows how much help he got from another Gruden. There you go. Yeah. There, that, yeah and the by NFC the way, if John, if John Gruden, who hasn't coached in years now, if he did decide to come out of the booth, and become a head coach again, you know, because of the respect he has, he'd probably be in the top five. Uh, a lot of these things are, are based on a, on a level of respect. You mentioned Sean Payton. I mean, Sean Payton obviously did a very good job for a very long time, but now he's become the new Jeff Fisher, 7-9, 7-9, 7 9 but he's still a top 10 coach. So, Hey, you know, there's circumstances, and you can argue both ways on basically every name on that list with the exception uh, of Bill Belichick. Uh, And I tend to to be one of those guys that agree with what they did and lean on experience because I I think it's a job you don't get really good at until you do it. I, I, I don't think there's no manual. There's no way of telling you how to do it. So you basically learn on the job, and you keep getting better if you survive seasons. And guys who have survived a lot of seasons, like Bill Belichick and and Pete Carroll and Andy Reid, they they tend to be really good coaches. 
It's funny. Uh, and what are the chances? You know, we, we had discussed, you know, I, we found this list. We're going to talk about this list. And then on the same day that, you know, Andy's in the top, he signs a contract extension. Really <laughs> juicy how that all kind of worked out. And uh, there's a lot of reaction out there. I mean, some people were saying he was fired. Other people say he's parting ways. I mean. Well, now I just saw a tweet that said uh, from a guy that said that he could not see. Not Andy, by the way, Not fired. Andy. The it's GM, uh, John, John Dorsey. John Dorsey. John Dorsey is being let go from the Chiefs. But I saw a tweet, Mike Gale, that said that John Dorsey could end up succeeding Ted Thompson in Green Bay. Now, yeah, I don't that's, know. Uh, that's been, yeah, that's been the long-rumored uh, succession plan in Green Bay. John Dorsey's a Green Bay guy. And everyone in this league has assumed that when – Ted Thompson eventually steps down, and that could be as soon as after this season, uh, then Dorsey would leave. And that's probably what happened, to be honest. The Chiefs were probably pushing him to say, look, either commit to us now right. or we're going to have to go look in a different direction. I would say this is a clear indication uh, that Ted Thompson's getting ready uh, and John Dorsey's going to go back to Green Bay. Okay, John McMullen, uh, we were going to talk about some of the best teams John's ever covered, but uh, we'll uh, have to table that for tomorrow. We, we, we had uh, some breaking news today uh, with the Chiefs GM out. By the way, while we're talking football, Derek Carr, $40 million guaranteed, $125 million bucks. Derek Carr is the highest paid player in NFL history. <laughs> and he was I, once I a guest said, I wrote about bash. it yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a mistake. It really is, and I think his his agent should have should have told him that. And I said, there's no difference between t- taking 24 and 25 million, except every story about you is not going to be led with the highest player in NFL history, <laughs> the highest paid quarterback in NFL history. And what is everyone going to say? He's not Tom Brady. He's not yeah. Aaron Rodgers. And they don't understand. It's about timing, and it's about circumstance. And he'll only be the highest-paid player in NFL history, maybe for a week. Who knows? Matt Stafford could sign tomorrow, and he'll probably get 26. All right. uh, Tomorrow we'll uh, talk about the best teams John's ever covered and who are some of the best teams over the last 30 years uh, on our NFL News and Notes segment. Thanks, pal. Hey, thanks, guys.